Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Rachel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today I'm going to be doing some repotting of plants that I should have repotted a little while ago, but I just really didn't have the time to really dedicate to repotting them. So I hope you enjoy this repotting video and um, I'm going to show you for the most part, if I'm not mistaken, they are all alocasia corms that I will be repotting and I'm going to show you and tell you about my entire process of sprouting my corms. These are my alocasia corms. I have them in here and these plants were they were sprouted on 11-12, November 12th, 2023. That is when these the I put them inside of this container. Um, some of them were not sprouted, but the ones that were not sprouted were the ones that were actually uh, already like chunks that had gone that I overwatered. Let's go there. It was chunks that I overwatered, and those were, and then those were put in here. I haven't opened this for a few days, so I'm just looking at them. So here we are. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Look at the good. Oh my goodness, did you get rotted? No, it's not, it's just a little pleat. I thought this one right here got rotted. This is sprouted from a chunk that was um, overwatered, and so I uh, just took all the roots off and I put it inside of here. And the rest of them were all corms. And I can see that I didn't label them. I didn't label them. <laughs> <laughs> but I know that this is a poly and a lot of them are polys because I had a ton of polycorms. But then I also have some Maharani. I see. Oh my goodness. Okay, I'm going to show you something I see in here. Do you guys remember when I went to the Home Depot and I found that um, Alocasia Silver Dragon? that had a spot on it. I have it upstairs. I'll probably insert a picture of it, but I had a silver dragon that had a spot. I had corms from that. And look at this right here. This is one of the corms. Do you see that? Do you see that little plant right in there, right in the middle? That is one of the corms from that silver dragon. Wow. And oh, there were three leaves on that sprouted corm. And I have to just um, spray my hands again. Okay, I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> when I am working with my um, with my corms or my sap seedlings, I normally try to keep the area free of any kind of chances of introducing bugs to the substrate because at this stage they're very delicate and they can be easily overcome by just a small amount of bugs and so randomly what I do is I spray my hands with alcohol I'll spray my surface I just finished spraying this surface that I am working on which I am working on my desk substrate that I'm going to be using is going to be a little bit different this time normally I have been using my LECA substrate for not LECA my LECA perlite substrate for potting up my alocasia because they really like that mixture my alocasia love that mixture, my monstera love that mixture, and my aglaonema love that mixture. But something else that my alocasia love is definitely vermiculite. Now, I just recently started using vermiculite maybe about three months ago, and I really like this. The only challenge that you have with this, though, is that when it dry, if you let it dry out, your plant will be almost as if it's in nothing. Because it will just like topple over and so I've been topping my vermiculite plants with some type of um, bonsai mixture and I'll show all of that to you but I'm really excited because I want to pull out a couple of these so that I can show them to you and I'm gonna go straight for this little spotted one right in here the silver dragon oh boy Now the vermiculite allows the roots to grow very, very well. So here is the root system for this one. And it has one, two, three, four leaves on it. And this again was put in here on 11-12. And today's date is December, oh, December 18th. Look at that. Spotted little silver dragon. Look at that. 
That's pretty. I really like that. And so this one over here has spots as well. Ah, so cute. So I am not going to be putting these directly into pots individually. I am just going to give them some more room. And so I have another one of these containers and I'm just going to put it right here and I'm going to put some more vermiculite into it and I am going to just give them more room to grow. And I really like the vermiculite because it's not dusty. It gives off a little bit of dust, but nothing like perlite. So I'm just going to, how about if I turn this this way and put this right here. So here is my dry mixture and I'm just going to make sure it's not right up against the side because I don't want the leaves to grow and to be right up on the side because that makes it so that they grow and they're touching and that's not good. Okay, so there, everything is submerged and the leaves have room to spread out. Okay, so there's number one. And I think what I'm going to do right now is just transfer some of the silver dragons from this area. And they do have very long roots. Look at that root system. So I'll just give it a little bit of room and I am going to pull out everything that I think is a silver dragon. How about that? Because I really don't know if they're all silver dragons because I didn't label them. That was so not smart. Here's another one with um, variegation on it. I keep calling it spots as if I don't know the correct term. And look at those roots. I hear footsteps coming down toward me. What's up, babes? Can you take the audio? Yes, dear. Sorry. Okay. Okay, I'm not sure how much of that was on recording, but I had to take out a whole bunch of them because the roots are intertwined. And so I took out a whole bunch and I'm trying not to destroy all of these little roots. And I'm taking polys and putting them over in this far right section. And I can see I lost some roots. Oh, no, wait, there was a corm in there. I thought it was just roots. It was actually a corm that was just late and sprouting. Well, later than these, it has, it's not late. Okay. And now I'm looking at one. This does not look like a poly. This looks like a bambino. So I'm going to leave this one over here. And there is a sprout coming off of the base of that one. Uh, let's see. And then this one, I don't think it's a poly because it has a different colored stem. Yeah, that's definitely something else. This right here may be a pink dragon because look at the stem. The stem is pink. So that must be a pink dragon. So I will leave this one over here. Okay, I think I found another. Oh, there's a sprouted corn. Oh, this is such a mess. Oh, <laughs> but it's fun. It's fun. I see a couple more pink dragons. Here is another silver dragon. And this one right here has variegation as well. So we'll put that one in this here, this container. And it looks like here's another. This is another. Looks like that's another. Okay, and just to show you, I'm going to leave it in here. But this is this is my Tunderosa that's in here. Isn't she cute? She'll be staying in there. Let's see, what are you? Okay, another dragon. You know, I really do wish that it was not um, the cold season because then I could mail these out to you guys but I can't mail these out right now because they would just die they really would I just got another um, baby allocation in the mail and 
it died maybe two days afterward. So I won't be ordering any more baby alocasias. It could be me, but... Okay, and I did put um, mineral water or feeding water in to wet this substrate because this is, they're already sprouted. If I put in corms, I do not feed it. But because these have already sprouted and they're growing, I do feed them when it's like that. They are active in their life. Okay, so let's see. This right here is definitely not, I don't know what this is actually. I, I really don't. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I sure do wish I labeled these. That would have been so smart. So I'm going to have to set up another bin, but I think I'm going to have to do this off camera. I do, only because right now I'm starting to feel overwhelmed and I don't want to like hurt my little baby plants. But so far, this is what I have. This one is still filled. I haven't even tackled that really big one yet. And um, I have the far right over here. I have... Um, no, I'm looking at one that is not a poly. This one right here is not a poly. That's definitely not a poly. Anyway, I have polys here, silver dragons here, and then this is the cluster of all of the originals. And I'm so excited about this. I do not want to hurt any of these plants. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate them all. And I pretty much showed you how I am separating them and what I'm doing. So um, I will separate them all and I will show you what happens with it. <laughs> I don't want to hurt any of these babies. Okay, I'll be back to show you. Okay, guys, this has been such a trial. I had to go out and get more vermiculite. And so I had to go and get a whole new bag because I had a lot of it, but I had to fill up all of these containers over here. Look at this. All of this because there were just so many corms in that packaging in the original box. And so I had to separate them and I will never do that again. I will never put so many in there. I guess I just didn't expect them all to sprout maybe. I don't know what I was thinking. But anyway, I was able to get them all set. And so this one right here has polys and silver, not silver dragons, polys and pink dragons. I'm not really sure at this stage they look a lot alike and so I have those two mixed in there. And then I have the silver dragons here. I had to move everything on my center table. Um, this, These are the silver dragons and, ooh, don't fall. I only had a few of the Maharani, but I still gave them their own container because these leaves tend to get a little bit big. It, they take a little bit longer to get big, but they do tend to get pretty big. Then I have the original one that still has some unsprouted corms in it that, well, they have roots, but they're not sprouted. And then this last one, this is Silver Dragons. I mean, I keep saying Silver Dragons, but these are Pink Dragons and... Polly's. <laughs> Those are pink dragons and polys. And I will wait until the leaves completely dry off and then I'll dust all of the vermiculite off of the leaves because when the vermiculite is wet, it really um, sticks like, like you're trying to clean up glitter. And now this was the really big leaf that was in there and the base that this was attached to, the chunk, it had three additional growing eyes and so I didn't want to put it in anything too slim and so I just put it into this right here and she just has a vermiculite bed. Now something that I read on the packaging for the vermiculite is that it is excellent for seed starting and improving moisture and nutrient retention but it also says that you can mix it 50-50 with perlite for use in hydroponic and ebb and flow systems and uh, 
on the back or somewhere. It says it promotes faster seed germination for proper germination. And I have found that all of those have proved to be true with the vermiculite, which is why I even decided to try it because it really, really does make it so that the seeds or the corms in this case, they germinate very, very quickly in the roots. You saw the roots that I was working with <laughs> and it was only November that I put these in here. It says, okay, back here it says the Stay Green Organics Horticultural Vermiculite is a natural soil amendment that loosens heavy soil, improves drainage and promotes quality and purity. It is ideal for maintaining the right balance of moisture and oxygen for water loving plants, which of course that is definitely an alocasia. It says it is ideal for maintaining the right balance of moisture and oxygen for water loving plants. Stay Green Organics Horticultural Vermiculite can be used either in combination with other soil amendments such as cocoa core, compost, sphagnum, peat moss, or in its on its own in a soilless hydroponic garden. So they tell you right there that you can use it on its own. Now I have been using it on its own and here is one of the plants. This is a Regal Shield Baby. And this is one of the plants that I put it in that I used it on its own. And you can see at the bottom, look at those roots. Now, when I try to up pot these, I'm going to show you exactly how I do it. And my whole table is covered in vermiculite right now. I just wanted to show you how I up pot them. I'm just going to pour a little bit more vermiculite on the top. And you know, um, you're not supposed to like bury the stem too much with the alocasias. So I poured some more on the top, you can see that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to lift it up, loosen it up and lift it. And that's how I am just going to bury it a little bit deeper. so it doesn't get disturbed so much because it is a, a fairly young plant. I mean, it's a really young plant. And I have a root that refuses to go down. <laughs> but that's all that I do when I want to just, um, that I put it in like really low, but as it gets all of the roots, you just bring it up a little bit. And sometimes at this stage, I mean, this one is standing up fairly well on its own, but at this stage, sometimes it will not stand up on its own because this mixture is just so light. And so what I do is I take a little bit of the, uh, what do you call it? The I take a little bit of the bonsai soil and I just put it right around the top. And the bonsai soil pretty much has the same composition as pond. So there it is. And it just keeps the top, it keeps the plant from flopping around. So just that quickly, I was able to up pot this plant without really disturbing the base of it. And so, so far I'm really liking this, although I really do like the way my alocasia have taken to my um, perlite and pond mixture. They really like that. And I like that for larger plants. I, I really do like that, but I just wanted to try this and the vermiculite definitely makes the roots grow very quickly. I actually have an Anthurium forgetii and I rotted it, it's a baby. I rotted it and I was so sad when I touched it and it just like fell over in the substrate that it was in. And so what I did was I took it out immediately because it still had two leaves. I took it out immediately and I put it into a container of vermiculite and I just watered it and put it into a, clo and I closed the container and it's now, has roots and it's growing a new leaf. I am so happy. And the leaves look terrible, but it's still holding on. And the vermiculite was allowed, it allowed the plant to grow the um, the roots out really, really quickly. So I have really been enjoying this. So I'll definitely keep you guys up post updated. I'll definitely keep you guys updated on how things are going with these plants. Um, this one right here, I'm sure is going to start bursting with so much because, I mean, the growing eyes on this chunk, it's amazing. And this is one that I rotted over the summertime. It was outside and it just got entirely too much moisture. And so 
it's getting giving me a second chance with it and I'm really happy about it I mean that first leaf is amazing can you imagine that's the first leaf that came out of it so again of course you hear this a lot when you have an alocasia if it goes dormant just don't toss it as long as it's firm if the base of it can be firm the corm can be firm just cut off anything extra and then just let it grow again I love that about alocasia that really really makes me happy because you get a second and a third and a fourth and a fifth chance <laughs> let me put a little bit of this on here as well that's it for today thank you so much for joining me guys i really appreciate you stopping by and i hope you enjoyed this video if you have any care tips that you want like to share with me i would really appreciate them <laughs> and i look forward to talking to you again soon bye guys